Hi, my name is Sam Shuey from Maple Systems. In today's lesson, I will show you how to use the timer functions that are readily available as part of ladder logic instructions in the Mapware 7000 programming software for the HMC 7000 series products. These include the on timer, the off timer, and the single shot timer. Timers are used in ladder logic programming to determine when a predefined amount of time has elapsed. This is commonly used in applications that require a specific amount of time during or between sequential actions. For example, think of the three cycles of a clothes washer. Each cycle must execute in proper sequence and must run for a preset period of time. The Mapware 7000 software supports three timer functions that can be used in ladder logic. The on timer counts while the input is on. When the preset time value is reached, the timer stops counting and the output turns on. Setting the input off resets the timer to zero and also turns the output off. The off timer counts while the input is off. When the preset time value is reached, the timer stops counting and the output turns off. Setting the input on resets the timer to zero and also turns the output on. A single shot timer counts while the input is on. Unlike the on timer, this timer continues to count even if the input is reset to off, hence the name single shot. Therefore, this timer can be used with a momentary input contact. When the preset time value is reached, the timer stops counting and the output turns off. While the timer is counting, the output is set on. You can configure any timer to increment in 10 millisecond, 100 millisecond, or one second intervals. This is done by selecting the timer address to fall within the address range of the interval count that you need. For precise timing down to a hundredth of a second, use address range T0 to T60. If you require a timer with a long count, say up to 3,276 seconds or approximately 54 minutes, use address range of T191 through T255. For something in between, use timers in the address range of T61 to T190, which can count in intervals of a tenth of a second. Regardless of which timer you use or count interval, the maximum value that you can configure for the count is 32,767. Now let's implement some examples of timers using block 1 in the main logic block folder and a few screens that will demonstrate the operation of timers. Notice that in rung 1 we have created an on timer using T0. Because we are using T0 as the address for the timer, it will increment in 10 millisecond intervals. You will also notice that instead of using a constant value for the preset register, we have decided to use an internal data register of T0. By doing this, we can adjust the amount of time that the timer will run before it reaches the preset value and turns on the output coil. However, as with every timer, you can easily select a constant value for the preset register or a register address using the instruction properties box for the selected timer. In this example, we will use the internal bit coil B0 to activate the timer and B1 as the output coil. While we are here, let's also look at a 100 millisecond on timer using T61 on rung number 2 and a one second on timer using T191 on rung number three. In both cases we have decided to use a register address for the preset. On rung number four you see an off timer. Remember that an off timer is very similar to an on timer except that the input coil must be off to activate the timer. Also the output coil will normally be on shutting off only when the timer reaches the preset value. Can you tell what the timer interval is for this timer? Since the address we selected is T1, this means that this is a 10 millisecond timer. Finally, on rung 5, we have a single shot timer using address T192 so that it will count in one second increments. Since the single shot timer only requires a pulse to turn it on, the input contact B8 does not have to remain on during the entire count. The output, B9, will turn on during the count and remain in the on state until the count is reached. 
Before we leave, notice that we never use the same timer address twice. Once you have associated a particular timer address with a timer instruction, you cannot use it again for another timer. To see how these timers work, let's create some screens to demonstrate each timer. Screen number one demonstrates the operation of the 10 millisecond on timer in rung number one. The timer will start when the B0 toggle bit is pressed. Register T0 is used to place a preset value and we will monitor the timer T0 as it counts. The output B1 and the timer set bit T0 should turn on once timer T0 reaches the value in preset D0. We want the timer to count for 5 seconds. So in the task folder for screen number 1, we will preload D0 with 500 whenever the screen opens. 10 millisecond timers will always increment every 1 100th one of a second. Therefore, by placing the value 500 in the preset register, this timer continues to increment until 5 seconds has passed. Screen number 2 demonstrates the operation of the 100 millisecond on timer in rung number 2. The timer will start when the B2 toggle bit is pressed. We want the timer to count for 3 seconds. So, in the task folder for screen number 2, we will preload D61 with 30 whenever this screen opens. Since a 100 millisecond timer always increments every tenth of a second, 30 is the proper value for a 3 second count. Finally, screen number 3 demonstrates the operation of the 1 second on timer in rung number 3. The timer will start when the B4 toggle bit is pressed. Since we want the timer to count for 6 seconds, the task folder for screen number 3 has a preload value of 6 for D191 whenever this screen opens. For screen number 4, we show an off timer configured for 10 millisecond intervals. Toggle bit B6 will activate this timer when it is in the off state. For this reason, we want the B6 input contact to be normally on when we enter this screen. Notice that in the task folder, we also have configured the preset register to 250 so that it will count for 2.5 seconds. And screen number 5 demonstrates how the single shot timer works in rung number 5. Since this timer does not require the input contact to remain on, we have decided to use a momentary contact for B8. Remember that output B9 will turn on when counting begins and shut off when the count value in T192 reaches the preset value in D2. In this example, we use the task folder to make the single shot timer count for 5 seconds. Let's download this project to the HMC7057 unit to see the timers in action. The startup screen is screen number 1, which has been pre-configured with a preset value in D0 of 5 seconds. Let's turn on B0. The timer increments in 10 millisecond intervals until 5 seconds has passed. Notice that output B1 in timer set bit T0.0 turn on once the preset value has been reached. To reset the on timer, we simply turn B0 off. To start the timer, we start the process once again by turning B0 on. Now let's look at the on timer on screen number 2. Screen number 2 has a preset value in D61 of 3 seconds. Let's turn on B2. The timer increments every tenth of a second until 3 seconds has passed. Once again, notice that output B3 and timer set bit T61.0 turn on once the preset value has been reached. But what happens if input B2 goes off while the timer is still counting? The on timer resets before the preset value is reached. Therefore, output B3 does not come on. Now let's look at the on timer on screen number 3. Screen number 3 is a 1 second timer set to count to 6 seconds. As with the other on timers, the output contact turns on once the preset has been reached. When creating your project, a constant value can be entered as the preset value for the timer. In these examples, we are using a register. This enables us to change the preset value to a new constant without modifying the project.
screen number four is our first glimpse at an off timer. For this example, we used a normally open contact that we turned on before opening the screen. However, off timers are typically used with input contacts that are normally closed. Notice also that output contact B7 and the timer set bit are already on. This is a 10 millisecond timer that has a two and a half second count. We activate the timer by turning off contact B6. After the timer has reached the preset value, the output contact and the timer set bit turn off. Resetting B6 back to the on state causes the outputs to turn back on. This is how the off timer differs from the on timer. So how does a single shot timer work? Screen number five displays a single shot one second timer that has been configured to count to five seconds. When the B8 input contact is pressed, the contact turns on starting the timer. Unlike the on timers, the output contact B9 and the timer set bit immediately turn on as the timer continues the count. Also note that B8 goes off as soon as the button is released since it is configured as a momentary switch. Although the input contact is now off, the timer continues to count for five seconds. While the timer is counting, switching the input contact on and off has no effect. When the preset value is reached, the output contact B9 and the timer set bit go off. They remain off until the timer is active again. This completes our video on how to use three timers that are available as ladder logic instructions for the HMC 7000 series. Please consult the MapWare 7000 help files and the HMC 7000 series operations manual for more details on these and other features of the HMC 7000. Or visit our website at www.maplesystems.com for more video tutorials, specifications, and other helpful materials on the HMC 7000 series.